Uh, good morning, my fellow Gambians, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to make a five-minute um, video uh, yesterday when I stated, you know, that uh, someone had informed me that if I arrived in the Gambia, uh, I would be arrested at the airport. And I decided to say to you that um, I would um, basically uh, come visit Senegal. But after a few, uh, few telephone calls from supporters and so forth, they warned me that that would be cowardice if I decide to do that. So I am willing to be arrested at the airport. So when I am coming to visit the Gambia, I will make announcement and the new dictatorship in the Gambia can arrest me at the airport. Because when Yaya Jame was in power, I had visited Gambia um, and I had never been uh, questioned, arrested by the previous dictatorship. So by me uh, uh, challenging the government and stating, you know, that they are mortgaging the future of the Gambia, the nepotism, cronyism, and the corruption that is going on uh, in the Gambia and the maladministration, I have every vested right to talk. So brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I will visit the Gambia, and if I'm going to be arrested at the airport, so be it. So I would like for you to know that I'm not scared of these uh, folks who can uh, th uh, try to threaten me to forego uh, what I'm going to do. But one thing I want to say here is this. There is no way for any one of us who, if we are trying to form political parties, we all have to come together as one because we cannot fight this uh, UDP uh, do, uh, dominated government, the coalition government, if we are divided. We all have to come together as one. So I just don't want to stay too long. I got to go to class. I just want to let you know that everything is fine here and I will visit the Gambia. And if I'm coming to visit the Gambia, I will make announcement and for the so-called dictators who are in the Gambia, they can arrest me at the airport. I have every right to criticize the Barrow administration every second, every minute, every week, every month, every year. Because the Gambia today, if you look at the International Monetary Fund, their report on the Gambia is very, very disturbing. The Gambia is classified as a debt distress country. And very soon, if this administration, the borough administration, tries to borrow money, their loans will not be approved. So again, yesterday when I went in, I talked to you about the gigantic debt that the Gambia government is in. And it's very, very serious. As of December 2016, the multilateral debt that the Gambia owes is $23 billion. $23 billion. And uh, if you add the bilateral debt, which is 140, 146, this is in dollars. So I have to translate it into Gambian dollars. I have to translate that into Gambian dollars. See, 47. It is six billion eight hundred and sixty two million. So what the Gambia government owes to the Paris Club and the non Paris Club that consists of the Kuwaiti Fund, the Bank of India, and the Saudi Fund for Development, the Gambia owes six billion. Eight hundred and six billion eight hundred and sixty two million dollars. 
Now, if you also add what the Gambia owes to bilateral creditors, which consists of IMF, IDA, African Development Bank, the Islamic Development Bank, and the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, the Gambia owes one second. The Gambia owes twenty-three billion. The Gambia owes twenty-three billion six hundred and eighty-eight million dollars. Okay. Now, if we add those two together, six billion eight hundred and sixty-two million. The Gambia owes thirty billion five hundred and fifty million dollars to the multilateral creditors and bilateral cre creditors, and we are not done yet. We're gonna go down here. What the Gambia owes what the Gambia owes in treasury bills, meaning people in the Gambia who want to invest in treasury bills. The Gambia owes $17 billion, $891 million. So if I add it's $17 billion, Eight hundred and ninety-one million. So far, is forty-eight billion. <clears throat> what the Gambia owes central bank bonds. There are treasury bills, and there are bonds. The Gambia owes additional ten billion. Seven hundred and seventy nine million so the Gambia owes what the Gambia owes so far now as of december thirty one two thousand and sixteen is fifty nine billion two hundred and twenty million dollars now I'm an accountant. I deal with numbers. And Gambians don't know this. When they make announcement, they said, we have Kuwaiti fund. They disbursed this amount of money to us. They did this here. They did that here. They did that here. And everybody thinks that, oh my God, the Gambia literally is getting a lot of help. But that type of help is not free. That type of help is loan that the Gambia has to pay with interest. When we know that the Gambia's total revenue for a year is eight billion, the Gambia owes 59 billion. So when we say that this government, the Barrow administration is mortgaging the future of the Gambia and people are making threat on me to say that if you come to the airport, they're going to arrest you. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, so be it. So be it. I will visit the Gambia. I will make announcement. If they want to pick me up at the airport, let them do it because it's my right to inform the Gambian people about what is going on in our country. We had never done anything in the Gambia in terms of road building, uh, school construction, uh, bridges, 
without getting help from outside. The taxes that Gambians are paying, those poor farmers, those folks out there, those entrepreneurs who are paying their taxes, their money is used to pay the ministers $50,000 a month. They also have free vehicles, free gas. Their wives have their wives have free vehicles to use for their own domestic use. When they travel and they get back to Gambia, they pay them three hundred thousand dollars. And I think Gambians need to know that. So I'm not going to stay too long tonight. I just came in because yesterday, after I said that since they made a threat on me, that I'm only going to stop in Senegal, I got a few telephone calls and the people said, please don't disappoint us. Go. If they're going to arrest you at the airport, let them do it. So I guess I will be going to jail. Or probably they're going to deny me a visa to visit the Gambia. And if they deny me a visa to visit the Gambia, I will let you know. Because the sooner I put my application, send my passport over to the authorities in the Gambia, if, uh, at, the, at the Gambian embassy, as a matter of fact, I don't trust the DC. I think I'm going to send mine to New York. So if then that is the case, if they deny me, I will let you know. And if they approve for me to go to the Gambia, I will make a public announcement. And I want all my supporters to come to the airport. And if they're going to arrest me, I'm willing to go to, the, to jail. Because on the Yajamis dictatorship, I went to Gambia. And I was never harassed. So this is the newfound dictatorship we have in our country. Because these people do not want anyone to criticize them. But I want you to hold your heads up. It is too early in the morning for me. You gotta go to class at nine o'clock. I just want to make, I say, well, let me just make a brief announcement. After hearing from supporters, I'm not gonna disappoint them. If I need to go to jail, brothers and sisters, that's life. But it is a disgrace that the very people that we had been fighting with against the Yaya Jammeh dictatorship now are the ones who are threatening us because we believe that the Gambia is going in the wrong direction. All I want to tell you is I'm fine. Within two months, I shall be in the Gambia and maybe I will spend the night in jail. But I'm not scared. So I got to go. I just want to make a brief announcement. And uh, I want you to know that this democracy that we have in the Gambia, we should not take it lightly. Let us not allow those UDP surrogates, those hooligans who fail that they own the Gambia, that folks like me and several others, Mr. Mahoney, uh, we have no right to speak. We have every right to speak. So thank you, Mr. Claudius Taylor. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fatu Dahaba Cham. And you have Barrow's picture. I hope you can tell Barrow that his surrogates are now threatening people like me, that if I get to the airport, they will arrest me. And it's so funny. It's so funny because I have family members who actually work at that state house. So if they're going to arrest me, I don't know what they're going to do. But I'm not scared. I'm not asking for no favor from anyone. Uh, yes, Mr. Pulo, he said nobody will arrest me. Well, maybe they won't. Maybe they will not now. But that's what they were trying to. So, Ms. Fatu, this is no joke, Dahaba. Probably you are even a relative. Maybe you don't know. If you come from Faraba Banta, I think you need to chill. 
so he said we have democracy in the Gambia, so it's no point for you to say ha ha, because this is not, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just trying to speak because that's what I was told. As you are in the Gambia, I also have people out there, even within the government, they come down here, listen to me, and I have not insulted anyone. I have been putting up facts, corruption, ineptitude, all these loans that the Gambia government is borrowing, they are mortgaging the future of our country. So far, 59 billion, 220 million in debt, when we don't even have incubators in the hospital. And I would like for you to remember, add the 56 billion that Usain Dabo got from China as a loan to build a convention center. That's not even included. I would also like for you to add, I would like for you to add the 48 billion crime lab. That is not included in this debt. I would also want you to add the 110 million port expansion that is not included in this debt. I also would like for you to add the tentative 220 million euro loan that they are trying to get to build a tourist hospital in the Gambia. These people don't know what they are doing. They are mortgaging our future. And folks like me will have to stand up and say, no, no, don't do that. So again, I thank you. I know where you're from, buddy. Mr. Pulo, buddy, you uh, can tell, buddy Pulo, uh, Dula Bari. Dula Bari was a good man. And we all come from the same place. Uh, you say, you're, of course I know that. But I will speak. And if I have to go to jail, so be it. My brother Haruna has been a very good friend, and I know he will do everything in his capacity to dialogue with some of the UDP folks out there. I have no doubt about him. Mr. Mr. Sise, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk. Uh, uh, this is politics, uh, and that's why your brother, Usenu Dabo, needs to come out of his shadows and make public announcement to his surrogates, not to intimidate folks like me and others like Femi Mahoney, who are out there trying to put the right thing in place to say that the Gambia is in the wrong direction. So Harun, I have no doubt about you. You are totally different. And in fact, it's very interesting. Usina Dabo's family members are, are Yaya Dabo comes in here, he never said, he never said any single thing to me, no, nothing negative. But these so-called folks who are actually looking for jobs, those are the ones who are going out there. People like that um, uh, Wandi Fasani out there in, in, Hels in Helsinki, Holland. So they are the ones who are uh, undermining the UDP. And I think Usain Dabo needs to stand up and condemn their actions. So let me go uh, again, Mr. I Imam Malik Jeng. How can we have an Imam early in the morning? My granddaddy was an Imam. And I went to a Catholic school. And ethics is part of what I believe in. But this loan, this $59 billion loan, I think we have to talk about it. And Gambians have to know about it. So, so far since these people came to power, do you know that they have accumulated over $23 billion loan? So right now, at this moment, the Gambia's debt is getting close to $100 billion. We cannot afford it. Let's be realistic. So thanks again. Acha Mbub, Imam Malik Jang, Mr. Far Faharuna uh, Sise, Ms. Hadi Jallo, Baripolo, Nambada, they say we are relatives, Fadu Dahaba. Look at that. So you see, actually, we are not Bantanga. 
It's a Fatu Tahaba. Faraba is not Bantanga. It's not a B A N T A N G. We are Faraba Banta. So I don't think you know my village because if you do know my village, you will not put an N G there. It's F A R A B A B A N T A. Thank you, Barry. Uh, uh, you say you are behind me. Well, I, uh, we are all Gambians and we also try as much as possible to uh, fight for what we believe in because I believe in democracy. So if they're going to arrest me, let them do it at the airport. Or if they're going to deny me entrance, that's fine. But I was, I will, in fact, this that issue, this is what I'm going to be talking about now. I'm going to talk about it, exhaust it until everyone hears it. I'm going to get people here. We're going to talk in local languages for Gambians to know what is going on. I'm going to create a WhatsApp group, and people are going to come down and talk about the debt so that Gambians can know that this government is mortgaging our future. Thank you, Barry. Pulo. Uh, Cesar Ba, thank you. Claudia Stella, thank you. Ahmad uh, Mohamed Basiruddin, early in the morning, you're here. Thank you. Mr. Muhammad Kujabi, thank you. Kujabi, I shall see you in Gambia. Keep your heads up. Don't make anyone make you feel your tribe is irrelevant. Because where I'm from, we don't know that. I told you about the history of the Kujabis. Keep your head up. I'll move on. Everything will be fine. Thank you, Femi Mahoney. I know they still have not discovered you, right? But we want you to keep. Please don't disclose yourself because now they're saying you are somebody else. Keep it up. Thank you, Mr. Cl uh, Curtis uh, Flint, uh, Polly Chaudhry. Uh, thank you, Mamudu Sisi, uh, Mr. Essa Cham, Mr. Oz Ture. Mr. Cham, we will see. Uh, I'll see you at, in Gambia. Maybe you can just come visit me in jail because I'm not scared now. I'm not going to disappoint anyone. We shall move on. Thank you, brother Job Jang, uh, Prince J.M. Jame, Mr. Omar Job. So let me go. i got to go. I just want to, Mr. Yankuba Jamba, I will call you. Mr. Yankuba Jamba, and now they are making threat that if I get to the airport, they will arrest me. So... I just want you to know that uh, we're going to be good. Oh, yeah, you say we'll get more vote for you from Badibu Saba. Of course, um, I can go to Badibu once and just talk at the Sanawaya to them and laugh at them and so forth. So uh, we're not worried about it. But like I said, all we have to do now is my objective is I will never, never... Try to run for president knowing that someone else is running. Because what they are doing now, trying to divide us, I think we should come together. And Mr. Hydra from, from, from Brufoot is trying to run. My objective now is to say, Mr. Hydra, let's sit and talk and let's have one candidate. Because Gambians don't like what is going on and we cannot allow this. Um, type of ignorance that's going on in the, in the country to move on. So we shall, we shall, we, we shall see. Uh, thank you, my friend from Badibo. And in fact, it's very interesting. I told someone, you know, so if the contests are supposed to have a union, Conte Wolof, Kolof, Conte Fula, Conte Sarahule, Conte Mandenga, I say, where do you think they should go? And someone say, you know, you're going to be Badibo. Nowhere, nowhere else. So thank you, my friend. Uh, Mom said, mom, mom, mom said, uh, Diamond Touch, thank you, my friend. So we, I got to go, you know, I got to make some money. <laughs> I don't want to be late for class, so I still see you and keep your heads up. Uh, we believe in the Gambians, but we do believe that the leader of the Gambia for, in, for our Democratic Party is in the Gambia. It's not in diaspora. We're just trying to pave the way for Gambians to find someone to be the leader of the Democratic Party. So until then, I thank you for this uh, time that you came in. And Wednesday, tomorrow, I will be, I'll be, I'll be online. 
uh, we're still going to talk about this debt because Gambians need Gambians need to know what is going on in our country. So until then, uh, good morning and please take care. Bye bye.